Hey guys, how we doing today? So a little short one, we're gonna work on one pinion again and I'm gonna add on a couple drills for you to improve your striking, your kicking, your balance, and your blocks. Just wanna say again, thanks for everybody sharing videos, sending me pictures. You guys are practicing, you look awesome. Uh, I'm gonna save shout outs till tomorrow. Uh, you know, bad news, I, I had a, a friend of mine from high school that didn't make it this week, but on a, and just shout, shout outs to his family, but uh, I'm kind of not in the, the best mood, but I'm here for you guys today because I miss seeing every single one of your faces. I can't tell you how much I miss my guys, all of you. So the shout outs will be coming tomorrow. Saturday will be dress up video, uh, not dress up video, uh, costume. You want to go in your pajamas, you go in your pajamas. You want to be in your full gi, go in your full gi. You want to dress up as a dinosaur, you dress up as a dinosaur. It does not matter to me what you're wearing as long as we're together Saturday and we're working out. So let's make it fun and you're only limited to your imagination. Make up your own costume. Uh, I was going to start doing shout outs, I better not do it. But a couple of you, I really loved your uniforms, your costumes last week, your, your superheroes, your Goku Mons, your Batman costume. Some of you had some big muscles in there. So today we're going to work on a real simple concept. We did it a couple weeks ago. It's called One Pinyon. And One Pinyon is just practicing in different directions against imaginary attackers. So, real simple, this is your virtual video game. You are the ninja, and there's multiple ninjas attacking. You can put things in different spots, or you can do it all in your head. For example, if my first turn is in this direction, and I want to pretend that that's a black ninja, and a gold ninja, and a white ninja, and a pink ninja, and I don't know, a fuchsia, whatever fuchsia color is, pit ninja. Put them there. If not, just practice your blocks. Simply one pinion is practicing your stances, turn, block, and step punch. What we mean by that is, so this, this angle, as I turn to you, if I did this, my attack's coming from here, but you could see my hips and my knees and my shoulders aren't engaged into my direction. So you're gonna have to work your hips, you're gonna have to work your timing and your blocks. It's only, there's only four directions we're gonna go, side, side, forward, backwards, but there's turns, and they will get a little tricky. If you get lost in a turn, if you're practicing at home, and this is reversing my right, your left, or I'll give you a couple hints, I'm putting things on the floor and I'll call out the colors. If you get confused and turn the wrong way, that's not wrong, as long as you're still blocking. What would be wrong is if I was turning this way and I'm all off balance. I want to make sure that my balance is there. And wherever I commit, my shoulders, my hips, my knees are lined up behind that punch. A better example is if I'm trying to punch to you and I end up this way, see how my body's facing away from the punch. So I cannot get the maximum amount of power in my punches, in my blocks, or my kicks. So I'll do it one time facing you and then I'll do it one time facing away from you. This is what I would recommend. Take a couple pillows, put one on this side, one on that side, one in front of you, one in back of you. If they're different colors, remember them by colors, but those are gonna be the four angles. And whenever we're going towards one of those angles, what do we want? We want shoulders, hips, knees, all facing that direction. As soon as I turn away from it, I'm going to lose power. All right, so one pinion. Deep breath in, and as you step out, imagine you're Arms are tied together and you're breaking through the chains. I know you can't break through chains, but just imagine. Our first ninja attacker is coming from this direction. So we're gonna pull our body into a cat stance. That means the weight is off of this foot. Step out and downward block with the left. We're going to half moon. What that means again is exactly what it sounds, a half a moon or make a C with your foot. As you go forward, turn, punch. Next attacker is behind us. So take this arm we just punched with, bring your foot all the way behind, turn and block. Now we have to step, step and punch the attacker. The next attacker is coming right towards us, turn and block, 
And he's a really big ninja, so he needs three punches. Half moon forward, punch one. Half moon forward, punch two. Half moon forward, punch three. Now this is a tricky one. And we'll do this move twice in the form. Your leg is gonna go behind and make a big spin. We wouldn't really do this in life, we would just turn and block. But sometimes they make it a little more difficult. Take this leg that's behind you. Remember, we have a front leg and a back leg. Tap the back leg, bring it around your body, turn and block. And if we get here and we're off, by off, what do I mean? Shoulders, hips, knees. If I turn and I'm facing this way, but my block's here, I need to readjust my body. Half moon forward, punch. The attacker is behind us. Take the hands you just punched with, turn behind us, and block. Check your shoulders, your knees, your hips. Half moon, punch the bad guy. Now we're gonna go away from where we just were, block down, and this is a super big ninja. He needs how many punches? Three of them. Step forward, punch one, two, three. Here comes that big turn again. Tap the back leg, we're gonna go behind our body, turn and block. Check your shoulders, hips, knees. Step forward, punch. Last two turns, turn behind us, block. Half moon forward, punch. Back to the center, breathe out, and finish. I'm gonna do it again facing the other way. But the most important aspect of this doesn't matter if we're turning the wrong way. Doesn't matter if we're, our punch is a little high or a little low. It just matters we're lining our body up. Once we get comfortable with the targets, we increase the speed, gives us a little bit of cardio, and we're trying to perfect that downward block and that front two knuckle punch. I hope everybody could work on that form. What I want my advanced guys to do is we're gonna put a kick in a punch or a kick in between each one. This is a drill I was taught many, many years ago. It's really cool. It works on transitioning your body weight from kicks to punches to blocks. It can get really confusing. That's why I want you to do it. We got all this extra time. So I'm gonna face the opposite way now. And we're gonna breathe out. Turn to our left. Downward block. Half moon. Punch. Hand we just punched with. They're coming behind us. Turn and block. Check your knees, hips. Shoulders, half moon punch. Here comes the big guy, turn and block. Three punches. One, two, three. Real quick before we do the next move, we don't wanna step and punch. We don't wanna be off balance. We wanna be in complete control as we step forward and deliver that punch. So that third punch, here comes that big turn. Tap your back leg. Turn behind you, block down. Half moon, punch. Coming behind you again. Block down. Half moon, punch. Back to where we were, block down. What are we checking? Shoulders, hips, knees. And here's that big guy, three punches. One, two, three. Big turn. Tap the back leg. Block down. Half moon, punch. Turn and block. Check shoulders, hips, knees, half moon, punch, and back in and breathe out. So, when we're learning forms, one pinion is the diff most difficult to learn because it's the newest thing. It's not the most difficult talent-wise, it's just it's the first time we're learning how to move, how to punch, how to drop our body weight as we punch, how to do a block with our body weight rather than just our arm. Now here's a little bit of an extra for my advanced guys. Again, it's gonna get a little tricky. And anybody, if you wanna do this, you can. Breathe out. Every move, before every move, we're gonna put a kick. So the first move of the form is a block. So before every move, kick. Maybe it's a side blade kick, block. Front kick, punch. Now notice, Front kick, I didn't come back to half moon. I went front kick, punch. Now our next move would be a turn block, but instead we do a back kick, turn and block. 
a reverse crescent punch, side kick block, front kick, here's the big ninja, punch, front kick, punch, front kick, punch, spinning back kick, block down, front kick, front two knuckle, back kick, turn, block, and don't forget to check, shoulders, hips, knees, are they facing our direction, front kick, punch, reverse crescent going back, block, front, punch, front, punch, front, punch, tap the back leg, spinning back kick, keep that balance, block down, front kick, punch, back kick, block down, front kick, punch, finish. Now that is a lot harder than one pinion. That's why we learned the form first. Again, just perfecting that downward block front to knuckle. So I'd like you to go back, everybody, try to practice one pinion. It's okay if you turn the wrong way, you get a little confused. Practice on that hard block, that hard front to knuckle. My advanced guys, go back, put those kicks in between. It's gonna really challenge your balance. And don't go faster to cover up your off balance. And this is what I mean by this. If I'm doing this move and I'm off balance and I put my foot down real quick, use the time, use your balance, take your time, recover that balance before we do the next move. It is a very difficult exercise. And let's try to do it 10 times. Whether we're doing just the form 10 times or maybe the second, the next five we do with the kicks and the punches in between. Great exercise. You don't need much room. You can practice inside. You can practice outside. Tomorrow we're going to have a physical workout. I have some guests coming back. We're going to have more punching in techniques tomorrow. We have a new form we're going to start next week called the comma form. All you will need for the comma form is the same paper towels we use for the chucks. And then we're going to put some aluminum foil on top to shape them like a comma. Again, a com <clears throat> excuse me, I can't speak today. A comma, as we see in the movies, is not a warrior's weapon. It was another farmer's tool. We mentioned a few videos back before that the weapons we see represented on TV, most of them in the Japanese culture come from the farming tools because they weren't allowed to carry weapons on them. So the chucks and the commas, the size, were all farming tools, and they kept those on to help defend themselves. You guys are doing great. I will see you tomorrow. Practice that form as many times as you can. Keep up the good work.